Hello and welcome, and we are at Blackfest 2021 Rhythm and Music Night, Lost in Sound, and I'm here with some lovely, amazing DJs and artists. So on my left-hand side, I've got the artist, I've got Eliza May, I've got MC Nelson, I've got Starkey the Messenger, and on my right-hand side, I've got Hannah Lynch, and I have Funk Butcher. How is everyone? Good, thank you. Good, yeah. yeah everyone's good, everyone's good. Oh yeah, I forgot, obviously there's another mic there, so... When you want to speak up, just pass the mic. You three on the left-hand side, us three on the right-hand side. But um, yeah, I'm going to start straight into it. Like, Blackfest 2021, are you all happy, excited to be here? Because usually we would be on Zoom and, you know, you know when you're on Zoom and you're on a Zoom call and, like, you, you can only see the top half. So <laughs> when you see the top half, like, you're wearing, like, your best clothes, you've got, like, your makeup done and stuff. And not, well, not, not me, but, you know, other you people. Sure? Yeah, yeah, other people. And then... You've just got like your boxer shorts on or, you know, shorts on and stuff, PJs. but PJs, <laughs> but it's nice to be in person actually for once. But um, yeah, so I'm going to start off by um, the first question. So what is music to you? And like, what, what, what do you identify as like music and how would you e express your music? Basically, I'll start with Eliza because she's on my left hand side. <laughs> Um, so I basically sing and play piano. I songwrite and I would say my vibes like hip hop, R&B, pop. Um, so music to me, I would say is like, my, my love is songwriting, so I was storytelling. So I just express how I feel. Um, I, it could be writing from how are my personal experiences or it literally could be like my friends or just anything I get inspired like day to day and yeah music to me is storytelling and expressing how I feel which I can't express in words so yeah that's me yeah I'd say music to me is just you know an extension of myself an opportunity to express myself so I don't know like any adjectives you might put on my music are just ways you describe me like I know a lot of people think I make like conscious hip hop or political rap, which is like just because that's what I'm like as a person. If I wake up tomorrow and I'm on some gangster shit, we're making some gangster music. I don't know if we're allowed to swear, but <laughs> but um, yeah. So music for me is just it's an fine. opportunity to express myself. Yeah, I mean, I guess just like echoing what other people have said, I feel like it's largely just about like, you know, expressing myself and just like um, kind of getting thoughts out that I might not be able to in other ways. I would say my music is quite political, but I feel the same. Like it's, it is like just how I feel. And it's not just like, I don't know, just like political dialogue or whatever. It's just like how I feel about the world. And I wouldn't, you know, just like, I guess, trying to understand the 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 world that we live in and like the stuff that happens and stuff like that, whilst also just like, you know, having a good time and, and, and yeah, enjoying ourselves. So yeah, that's what music is to me, I would say. I'll come back to the left-hand side because there's a lot of politicians to my left-hand side with, the, <laughs> with their music, but <laughs> moving on to the right-hand side. So obviously we've got two DJs and you both are at like variant levels of, of your careers basically. And so what, what, how would you say music is to yourself and what, what, what made you get into it from the beginning? Um, so music to me is life. Like even though I don't like songwrite, I still feel like I can express myself through music, like through DJing. And like I'll be in the studio and like I'll always switch it up. So like one, it just depends how I feel. Like I feel like I can just go in the studio and just play different genres of music. Like depending on like how I feel on that day. Mm -hmm. So that's how I that's how I use music to express myself. Um, how I got into it was it's mad really because it was like a joke I was like in the garden a barbecue party and I just started like messing about and then I was like no I love it I've got to do it so that, that's it really yeah um I think music to me is um it's energy it's um it's the transference of the energy that I'm feeling at the time and 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 communicating that energy to the crowd when I'm DJing when I'm doing a DJing set I'm moving that energy through the night beginning to end trying to create like Eliza said a story a narrative so I'm storytelling in that moment beginning middle and end and um, and just like you would have in a film you're, you're trying to surprise people within your set trying to give them something that they don't know that that's a bit unexpected um, so there's that and because I, I songwriter produce as well um, there's aspects of um, the, the grey areas of my life that, um, that are nuanced, that aren't just black and white. I try and express that through my music production as well. So you may get aspects, if you were to listen to my catalogue, where some are political, some is just, just want to lose yourself in a club environment and space. So it's about showing kind of 
the, the the diversity of character that I have. So that's that's music. It's just really f real freedom expression. Yeah. So that's it in a nutshell. Yeah, that's a good answer. But kind of so this is, this question is going to be to both sides. But I'm going to start with the artist on the left hand side. So you 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 all have just mentioned like about storytelling and about you know creating a narrative and politics within your music. Do you think that musicians and artists have the responsibility to do that within the music or do you think music can just be like a release and expression of just whatever you're feeling at that time or do you specifically think with my music i'm gonna portray a message and that's to anyone to answer i know it's a bit of a deep question but <laughs> um yeah i don't think like musicians really have any obligation to you know what i mean like I mean, I don't want to hear what Lady Gaga has to say about like Middle East politics. Like, it's not you know what I mean. Like, um, if if you so feel it, you know what I mean. That's what's on your mind, by all means. But I mean, with with all things, as with music, you can I think you can often tell when like something is being forced or when someone's trying to do something because it's the the moment at the time. Like, it's going to come across inauthentic. So, like, obviously, only pass comments and only you know speak about things that you feel comfortable speaking about and that you that you know about. Mm -hmm. I think like the only the only obligation that I guess I would say musicians have is just to be like honest and just like speak their truth and just be themselves. Like I don't think there's I think beyond that there's not really any kind of obligation or responsibility that musicians have. I think that yeah, like you say, when people are making music that's dishonest or not themselves or like trying to I guess like creating a false narrative that's not true to them, like that really shows. So I would say that the only I guess like responsibility or whatever or like I guess the only thing that we can expect musicians to do is just be themselves and whether that's like, I guess, politics or whether that's, you know, just having a good time or whatever, like, you know, depends on depends on the person and, and their experiences that they project into their music, I would say. Can I just add to, add to that quickly as well? Is that like, I do think it's something that just tends to happen in the black community, especially is that, you know, you have notable public figures and they get a lot of pressure to to speak on certain issues like most other communities they don't think like they're rappers or they're musicians or community leaders it's like now nah, you just get to rap and and have fun like and you you have other people who yeah. know about those subjects who really should be speaking on it so I literally agree with what everyone said so far. Again, I don't think any artist should have the responsibility to speak on things going on. I feel like it is it's just your if it's your passion, you can be free and talk about whatever you want. If it's anything, like yeah, that's how that's what I think. So when it comes to like creating the music, obviously because you both you record and you you write and produce and you DJ, like do you feel that you then almost have the ability to create a narrative. So for example, like if you're on, you're performing as a DJ and you know that my audience is this, can, do you feel like you have the responsibility, similar to how the artists have the responsibility when they're creating? I think like what I've learned since, I've, since I started DJing about five years ago now, is like you could be the most skillful DJ in the world, but if you can't read the crowd, there's no point. Like you've got to be able to read the crowd like you've got to feel energy and be able to read the crowd. So, do you agree? Yeah, no, definitely agree, um, million percent. Um, and also in, in regards to um, what Stark was saying about being honest, if you are honest, then ultimately you will become political because everything is tied into our political day to day. You could be writing about your um, your history and your background of, of um, growing up and not having enough money and that's political there um, just your your socio-economic circumstances you're being political but you may not it may not be the kind of the 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 hot topic at the time like something going in the Middle East or something going in the, in the, in the continent of Africa and so on and so forth so some people might kind of play down that level of, of political awareness but if you're honest you're going to be political whether you're talking about um, depression mental health that's political as well that's tied into resources with, with nhs and so on and so forth so you find that if you are just honest you will touch on some political aspect it may not be on brand of what's happening at the moment but if you're honest then you will touch that that political sphere and i think if you if you market it in that way it will compel artists to be even more honest because i feel um there is this whole question of obligation and artists kind of they get scared because they feel like they're not on point or they're not following the kind of the the trendy narrative which is consciousness at the moment but again if they're honest 
if they did come from a wealthy background and they want to speak on it, that's fine. That's political as well. You're talking about the the kind of the disparity and 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 so not and whatnot in wealth. So. Yeah, I just think it's honesty is like a, a big key to unlocking those um, insecurities about the artistry in itself. Yeah, that was a good answer. So kind of bouncing off what you've just touched upon, um, this is a question more for the two lovely ladies at either side of me. Um, being honest, being true to yourself when you are creating your music, when you're you know, producing your craft. So what pressures then do you feel? Because obviously being a woman in this industry like how does that reflect when you're then creating music or when you're performing because obviously some people might look at you and think you know oh she should make that kind of music based on your look and that not, might not be what your story is about so like what pressures do you think you feel as an artist and then i'll come to you as a DJ. um for me definitely i feel like overall just being a girl in the industry like the music industry is that she predominantly men like most producers I work with are men. Like my musicians I work with, they're literally men. So um, I feel like there's a lot of pressure, like in studio. I don't know. I feel like I feel like I have to work harder than maybe other other men. Um, I agree. Harder. Yeah. It's, harder. I don't know. It's like it's just yeah. I feel like yeah. We have to work a lot harder in the industry with studio, um, even imagery. Like, and I feel like. Not to be rude on males, but I don't know, like, I feel like, especially with the audience, I don't know, it, like, I'm trying to word it in a respectful way. So basically, like, if you're a woman, you have to be out there and people have to look at you as like, oh, look at her. Yeah. But a man can be a bit classy it's like when and get away with it. It's like, like... <laughs> I've had in the past when promoters and stuff from, like, clubs or, like, events have messaged me and been like, oh, we really want to get you on one of our events. We want that, like sexy um say it's like a friday date night like we want that sexy date night and it's like no why are you booking me for like that to yeah, look like that little sexy opinion. woman on a poster like mm -hmm. no like yeah. book me because i'm a good dj exactly. or don't book me at all exactly. like book That's me because exactly i've got skills and i work hard like exactly. why does it matter what i look like do you know what yeah. i mean like people are hearing the music like the people go in the club for the music not to look at me exactly. so why do we have to be there like looking a certain way just it, i just think no just to t touch up on that, but do you think then that could play in your favour though? Because if, if, every if everybody's like, I want that DJ because one, she's good, but also because she's good looking, do you think that can also play in your favour? I'm not saying it's like the right way to do business, but obviously we know, especially- I just, I just don't like looks. when people message me and they mention something, trying to book me and then they mention something to do with like how I look mm. or how I am. I just find it uncomfortable. Because I think, like, are yeah. you, do you even think I'm a good DJ? Yeah, I'm you know the same. I mean? Like, with singing, I feel like I was, I've been at it for so many years. And I've worked, I started so young. Did my first gig when I was eight. But, like, I feel like, looks-wise, I feel like they just, like, if you're good-looking. And honest, oh, don't get me wrong, it helps. It does help a lot. Because, let's be serious, like, visuals are so important in this industry. Like, um, especially as a female. But I feel like... A lot of the time, they rather they don't know how how hot they don't know the backstory. They don't know because that's all they see is what they see in front of you. That's why. Okay, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Kind of them um, same kind of question, but passing it on to the gentleman. So obviously, like coming from whatever black background or mixed ethnicity background, do you then also feel like there's a pressure to then kind of conform or show that like? You know, like in the in in rap, especially, there's the almost the persona of what a rapper is, and if you don't fit that persona of it, you're like, he's an alternative rapper. You know, he he lights incense when he, before he goes to bed, and <laughs> do you see you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? You see? What I'm <laughs> you see? <laughs> One of them ones. <laughs> the way I do too. So it's fine. It's the hair, you know, <laughs> the hair, you know But yeah. Do you feel the pressures to like, conform? Um, to be honest, no. Like, I mean, I've been rapping for a long time. I've been rapping since I was like nine. Started off as a grime MC. When I was a grime MC, I used to feel it a little bit more. Used to feel it a bit more. Used to, you know, be in the sets and everyone was gassed by like the biggest guy who X, Y, Z on, you know what I mean? Like, it won't care about the bars. But honestly, rap is such a diverse genre. 
like you know i grew up on loads of weirdos who are not you know what i mean you can't throw a punch who are, who are, just, who are bookish and I've, I've honestly never really felt felt anything anything like like I mean, yeah anything like what i'm sure women have to go through in terms of like their image and how they portray themselves i feel like there's space for everyone in rap um yeah i, I really really yeah don't feel much pressure to be honest I mean, in some ways, like musically, I would say I feel it, like to an extent, like, I mean, the thing is with me, like, I never really tried to, like, I guess be like, I don't know, some kind of like hard, like grime entity or whatever, because everyone that knows me just knows that's really not me. Like, I'm just like, I'm way too nice to even like try that. But like, um, I feel like even like operating in that space, sometimes you do get like people who might not like accept you as much. But like, like, like Nelson's are like, there's literally nothing on the level of like, I don't know, being a woman in such a, a male dominated industry, like, um, that's something that I never really had to think of. I feel like I've had at least, like, I would say a lot, overwhelmingly in my experience, I would say that people have been quite, like, happy and, like, um, accepting. And, I, I, and as much as it's, like, sometimes, I guess, being a bit, like, different or whatever in some ways is, like, people might be weirded out. A lot of the time, people, like, embrace it because I think people are, like... I think sometimes people see it as refreshing or whatever, like when someone's doing something that's maybe not just like, I don't know, um, some like grime beat and then like, you know, the 16 or whatever. Um, but yeah, like I say, I feel like with the image thing specifically, like I, I don't really think I've ever really had to think about that as much. Um, yeah, and there's clearly a lot of work that needs to be done in that area in regards to like equality and stuff like that, I would say as well. Can I just add one thing? I think the main thing about rap as well, because like, again, I've done loads of shows, performed the alongside rappers of all stripes and styles. And the one thing I notice is that like, basically like all the conscious rappers want like the respect from the road rappers. You want to be seen as like, yeah, I can hang with you guys. And all the road rappers want the conscious guys to respect their pen. So it's just like the grass is always greener. And like, <laughs> I think that's what it really comes down to. Yeah, they, they were both good answers. So like kind of similar to what I just asked um, the guys on my left hand side, um, but in terms of like DJing then, when it comes to like actually creating the and producing as well, when you're creating the music, do you ever ha then feel like you're pigeonholed in creating a certain type of music? Because like your influences might be something like, I don't know, rock inspired or something, but because that's not like something seen in our community, you're probably thinking, should I really go down those holes or how do you feel about that? Yeah, definitely. I think there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of influence um, and impact from the media and how we shaped our perceptions of what black people stereotypically should be into and then that kind of feeds into your the way your, your your capacity is to market yourself as a brand so for example if I was to be a DJ I would have to be visually marketing myself in a specific way for me to drop something eclectic in my set um, midway uh, like a drill track next to a track by I don't know Guns N' Roses for example which may go down in some other spaces if I looked a certain way dressed a certain way and so on and so forth but because of initially the way I present myself or the people that I'm with there's almost there's these unspoken barriers that I need to kind of get through and maybe the only way I get through them is by um aggressive PR mm. kind of um, like revealing that I have these other uh, deeper interests and, and I have to do these interviews and people have to kind of understand and do this learning but other other races they don't have to do that level of in-depth kind of discovery to kind of uh, for, for the audience to understand where they're coming from in their artistry um, that's a big problem because what happens with that is you will get very very basic level presentations of an artist for example a black woman doing rock and then the audience will look at it and say this doesn't feel right because it's not what they're used to so forget the, the dressing or anything like it's just a black woman with a guitar in her hand automatically this is thrown out of it's thrown them off sync so a lot of the, the media, the music publications, because they haven't shown the full diversity, the full spectrum of black people in positions of different music field. And I mean, I guess it's the same way if we were to kind of look at um, a white guy with an African drum and we would go, hmm, this feels weird. It doesn't feel authentic, but the damaging, it's not as damaging for them in that space because they, they dominate so many other areas of music and they can get far in so many other areas of, of the, the music field that the, the odd few spaces that they are they would appear inauthentic doesn't really hurt their artistry. But 
I think coming back again to what we were saying, when you when you take genres which have uh, black roots, such as house, such as rock, such as jazz, R and B, and then when you look at the top of those of those genres and you don't see black artists, it's a big problem. Yeah. 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 No worries. Oh, no, sorry. I'll wait. Go. You go. I'll be quick then. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to add to that. Like, I feel like it annoys me so much when I see that with rock in particular and like a lot of rock genres. Like, I know some like kind of black rock artists and they've spoken to me about it a lot. Um, and like, it just really annoys me because when we look at like rock's history and stuff like that, it is so rooted in black music and like black yeah. culture. And that's it was essentially built off of that. So the fact that like it's kind of become, I guess, like appropriated and then to the extent where it's like the originators of the genre, the creators of the genre have been like othered from it so much that they feel like they had to do that work. Just like it's so wrong. Where, like it speaks so much to like, I guess, the level to which that like exists in like music, I guess. Yeah. Sorry. I just wanted to I just wanted to add that. Yeah, like that's how I feel about house music because I like say I'm known as like an R and B DJ, which I love. Like I like I get so many opportunities and I'm so grateful for them. But I love playing house. Like I love mixing house and the feeling I get from it is amazing. And like, but it's like no one in Liverpool is gonna book me to play house. But why? Like, and then I done we done a course actually with Blackfest and it was all about the origins of house and you just learn so much about like where house comes from and it's like. It doesn't make sense. I, yeah. I, I wish I had more opportunities to play house in Liverpool, but that I just, it's like I give up with it because it's just not happening. Maybe you need to create your own lane. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but uh, it's not like like I've put house mixes up the same amount of house mixes that I put up the same amount as R and B mixes. Like I, I do put stuff up, but it's yeah. like you're an R and B DJ. Like yeah. you're a black female DJ. You're an R and B DJ. Like. That's yeah, it. Get, get pigeonholed so yeah. kind of like staying on that kind of topic of pigeonhole and stuff obviously we all have a variety of different accents here so how, how does that affect when you're like either getting more, maybe more so for the artists a bit if you're from up north and you have that kind of accent do you think that you get like I don't know frowned upon because people aren't used to hearing it or even if you're not from the north but maybe you're from the south but you're living in the north and people aren't used to that. Like, how 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 do you think that? Um, whether that's like a bias or a plus for you? Um, well, I'm originally I'm f I'm from Birkenhead to the Wirral. Um, my parents' dad's from Birmingham. My mum's from Shropshire. So my accent's a little bit like I don't even know what it is if I'm honest. But like when I go down, I know it's northern. I know that for a fact. So I live in London right now. I'm studying there, and um, like. People can instantly tell I'm Northern and like, to be honest, I feel like I don't really get like, okay, when I was, went to college in London, like I, f I found like f making, like people used to imitate my accent and stuff like that. And like, they like down there, they think I'm so scouse. And I'm like, <laughs> I know, I know, I know, it's crazy. So yeah, I'm like, you should hear my friends. <laughs> but um, yeah, so no, I definitely thought like, like low key, a little bit bullying, like I did like in college, but, the minute I got to uni, I just, I guess it depends where you're at. Cause the minute I got to uni, everyone was like so intrigued by it. And they like Londoners love any, anything that's not London. Cause it's unique. Yeah. So yeah, no, I found that right now it's like, it's kind of a pro for me. It's actually kind it's, it shows, seems that I'm like unique by it. So it kind of is almost helps in my favor um, and makes me more unique. So yeah. Um, yeah. I, I just echo those sentiments. Like, I mean, I'd have never really had like anyone say anything, but my accent's not that strong, to be honest, compared to <laughs> some of the scousers. But I mean, it's, I don't know, it's just a, it's a market. Some people you remember, remember you by, like I go to hip hop nights. I mean, there's 20 MCs there trying to be like, oh yeah, I'm, let, put me on, I'm trying to MC. But like, it's, it's obviously so much easier to be like, what was that, that guy, that scouse guy? Like they remember that, but they're just like, and amongst the face of however many MCs, but like I've never had anything negative about it. It's just something different really that, yeah, probably. I mean, kind of similar. I feel like with me, like, some people don't even realize I'm Scouse because I don't really, like, talk, like, that Scouse at all. But then I start, I feel like when I rap, I go a lot more, like, Scouse and stuff. But I, I would say similar things, really. Like, obviously, you get the odd person who just, like, takes the takes the mick and whatever, and it's just like, oh, chicken, chips, kind of cook, well, like, all that, all that nonsense. But, like, generally, I feel like people kind of are warm to it because, like, I feel like with rap and hip-hop, like, it's so London-dominated that it's, like, anything different to that is, like... I feel like it's pe people see it as refreshing, so yeah, I would say I would say generally it's been a positive. 
think Hannah, you can answer this one next because I, I mean, you're probably the, the one with the most recognisable accent out of all of us. So, no. <laughs> 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 How are we? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, have you? Because obviously you play yeah. with girls don't sing, but I, I feel think like, you're yeah. the only one from Liverpool, aren't I'm, you? Yeah, I'm the only one from Liverpool, but I, I feel like it is, it has worked for me. Like especially going out to town, like London and stuff. Like I people would, people would always recognise my accent from anywhere. Do you think so? That's like a marketing ploy that you, they've got someone. And you always from go Liverpool. say that again, say that. <laughs> I will. I'm not bothered. You know, <laughs> I'm just like yeah, I will. <laughs> Fair dues. But yeah, um, so kind of like the last kind of question pushing on to, um, so like have you. Has anyone got anything coming up, coming out that they want to like promote and release and shout about? Um, I'm still releasing music under my, my label, Houseology, um, trying to um, finally get this album out. I've been sitting there for about 10 years. Um, but yeah, I just feel like it's um, everything's come together. So I'm just at Funk Butcher, at Houseology label on all the socials. So yeah. Perfect. Hannah, do you want to plug? So where can they book you for house sets? Because you've been <laughs> saying that they don't you know book what, you for house sets. I, I am part of a group, Girls Don't Sing. There's four of us, and yeah. like what I love about when we do our sets, like when we do our events, we say to each other, like this, we say play whatever you want. Like mm -hmm. we're all there on the decks, but we don't ever say to each other, you've got to play this, you've got to play that. Like we can literally play whatever we want to feel. So I'll always go with like funky house and garage and stuff because that's what I love, like that up up tempo stuff. Where I don't really get anywhere in Liverpool to like play like that. So that's why I love our event so much. But yeah, we've got one on Wednesday. Keep pushes coming to Liverpool, so it's in Kitchen Street. Um, I literally just released about three weeks ago um, a garbage track. So um, I'm normally hip hop, but it was summer and I kind of just wanted, I was playing around with a beat and I just was like, oh my God, it works. So yeah, um, it's with Heavy Trackers, which um, are like a duo of producers from in London. And yeah, I just released it, done a video, um, which has been released on GRM. It's doing quite well. And yeah, if you want to go check that out, my Instagram's Eliza May. Yeah, so. Yeah, so that track is heavy. Yeah, it's really heavy. Um, I mean, yeah, I've just put some music out, not in, like on the horizon, but there's always new tunes, always producing for the other people and stuff like that. MC Nelson, all the social medias, you know how it goes, you find me. <laughs> yeah, similar really. I've just been in a very much like writing space at the moment. I haven't got like much, I guess, concrete stuff planned at the moment, but um, yeah, Starkey Music on all socials. I will say that I am producing music for Fuse, which is uh, Fuse UK which is like a charity kind of fashion and dance show that happens. It was Bristol based, but now hence Fuse UK, it's just expanded to the UK. Um, I'm gonna be producing music for that this year. So, I mean, check that out on Instagram. It should be really good. It's all for charity. They raised like 24K last year. Um, so yeah, get involved in that. But um, other than that, yeah, there will be new music soon. It's coming, but yeah, Starkey Music on all socials. Then. Amazing. One, I've actually got another question. So have any of you worked together musically? No. no? This is your networking no. opportunity now. You, you guys, you, you got a DJ, you got a producer, <laughs> back to back, you got rappers, singers. If you need, if you need management, I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, but yeah. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> he said it already, but yeah. But um, yeah, so is there any questions that you've got to ask each other actually? Hey, hey. Any questions? Any questions? Anything that you you've been thinking? Oh, I want to ask that person. Maybe, maybe after the performances. After yeah. the performances. Yeah. Did I put everyone on the spot a little bit? <laughs> I'm sorry about that, but um, yeah, we've. That, I mean, that's been a, a great conversation between um, everyone on the panel. We've had Funk Butcher, Hannah Lynch, myself, Tezza. We've had Eliza May, MC Nelson, Starkey, The Messenger. Everyone's plugged all their socials, so everyone should be able to go and find them. Obviously, thanks to Blackfest as well for creating this. And um, yeah, thank you. 2021, over and out.